if you hear me needing a new roof, it didn't, it work. didn't work. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. As you can see, I'm here again with Jim and we are standing in front of the wind generator. Uh, Jim has got it figured out how to install it and we're, and for the very first time. Yep. And so this is kind of a learning as we go type deal. Um, and so we're gonna show you how we've, we had envisioned it and how we're going to do it. And then for all the details, we're not gonna show you any details really, you have to go to Jim's channel and he will detail it and you'll have it all in really great detail. Jim, what is your channel? Solar Boondocker. Really easy to remember, Solar Boondocker. And what does the Solar Boondocker need? He needs electricity and we have the wind generator. Now we already have a video, we're not going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the wind generator, the cost. Well, let's really quickly go over the cost. How much did the, was the wind generator? Um, the wind generator is $4.99 including the hybrid controller and a 100 watt panel. Right, and it's a 400 watt generator. It's 400 watt generator at 23 and a half miles an hour. So, in other words, if it's not 23 and a half miles per hour, you don't get 400 watts. No, it, it's, it's linear, I guess you call it. Uh, the faster the wind, the more you get up to 23 and a half miles an hour. And then if it gets too fast, it shuts off. Right, so there's a real narrow range of 400 watt production. And uh, personally, I think we're going to find it's not worth the money, even though that's pretty cheap. Uh, so you've been here, uh, we're, in, in near, we're in Oregon, uh, near Klamath Falls, and you've been here for two weeks. Two weeks. Would you have been able to run the generator hardly at all? Very, I, I, I don't, I think there's been a few short periods it would have turned. I don't think it would have ever produced 400. No, so we, we're thinking that it, now in, this, in the winter, you spent last year down in the Arizona desert. There, there were times, weeks at a time, where we had strong wind. So we we're thinking this may be a winter only deal in the desert. Uh, we're not sure of that, we're gonna find out. But that's the whole point of this series. Jim will find out. Jim is a real methodical guy. And we'll know how much power he produced over the, over the summer, and then we'll find out how much power he produces over the winter. We'll and, and there will be little tweaks I do to the mounts and tie downs and things like that until then. It, it, inventing these things is always uh, try this and see what you should have done. Right. So this is, uh, this is mounting the generator one. And yep. I think there will be very quickly a two. <laughs> I, I've already seen things I want to change. Right. So and that's the way these things work. But you go to Jim's channel, which your channel is? Solar Boondocker. And you'll see the evolution of the mount. But so let's go over the mounting system really quick. Okay. How, just I'll turn it over to you and you tell us. This is, uh, oh, falling down. This is inch and a half conduit. Uh, they come in 10 foot pieces. I have them cut in seven and a half foot pieces so that they will strap to my back bumper and not stick out. That'll give me 15 feet in the air, which is just above the minimum of 14 feet that they call for. It's coupled down here. Now let's tell them we bought the all we bought all the parts at Home Depot. Uh, everything came from Home Depot. It was 150 bucks. Everything, yes. <clears throat> uh, other than wood, you already had some wood, and we'll show you where we use the wood. It was 150 bucks, and um, everything was designed on the fly. I, I was looking at the parts I could. Uh, acquire and use. Um, there, there's things I'd do differently if I had a drill press and an, uh, a vice and I, I don't carry that stuff out here anymore. Okay so uh, I remember we, I went with him and we bought all this stuff together. Uh, we had uh, there are two choices when it comes to this pipe. Ex can you explain that to yeah, them? Yeah there, this is conduit. You can also get galvanized pipe. Um, much more expensive considerably heavier however Home Depot will cut and thread galvanized pipe where they won't do uh, conduit so we did we bought the conduit and they did not cut it or thread it you had to do that I, I had to do that well I, I use both ends of the conduit are threaded but um, I, I had to do the cutting and then I, I use the cut ends for the mount in the, in the mount up here on the wind generator um, it says this 
is a, is a two inch diameter, do not get a two inch diameter pipe. Uh, two inches won't fit in there, half, uh, inch and a half is, is really all it can take. Again, uh, I know we're not giving you enough information for you to duplicate this, but you have to go to Jim's channel and he will show you in videos and photos yep. everything you need to duplicate exactly what he's done. We're, this is an overview. And, um, and I even used power tools without shedding the blood. No blood. That's always a good thing, no blood. Okay, so we have here, uh, you tell them what this is. Um, this is just a coupler that comes, actually comes with the conduit. This is a, an eye bolt that we're going to use to do uh, tie down straps to give it extra support in the air. This is my simple mount system. I made the base out of a 2x6 that the trailer's tongue sits on. Two heavy duty L brackets bolted to it with half inch bolts and nuts. So those are, I'm in the shade, but that's the L brackets right here. Right. And again, we just got these at Home Depot. Yep. And everything came from Home Depot. Um, you, you have to be resourceful out here and, and Home Depot provides us with a lot. Uh, this right here is just two uh, pipe hanging brackets strapped together with a nut. Um, it's not really intended to be the major means of support. It just holds it in place until the uh, tie down straps get to it and those are what keep it in place. Okay, okay. So really this is, you know, you just invented all this in your head Yeah. and we went to Home Depot and you said, well this part will work, oh that part won't work and here we are. Yeah, we were there for a while. We were there for a while. <laughs> um, I, I pick up things, I look at them, I, I try to fit them together and eventually I come up with something. Right. Now whether or not it's gonna work We'll find out in future videos. Well, hopefully, I'm pretty sure it's not going to fall down, but uh, hopefully it'll work. I'm, I'm worried about vibrations. You might get a lot of vibration because the things, when they're turning, they can vibrate. Yep. Well, we're, we're going to find out. Most of it, I'm hoping, is going to be transmitted right down into the ground. Right. Um, the straps are going to be hooked to the frame of the trailer and the truck, so they, they shouldn't transmit vibration. We're, it's just, this is probably going to be the major uh, transmitter of vibration to the trailer itself. Right. You might think about uh, a ratchet strap around this. H hook it into here and then a ratchet strap to Could be. seal it a little tighter. Yeah. Just something to think about. Yeah. Uh, and we also both thought that we really need a bigger piece of wood. Yeah, I'm actually going to go um, two two by sixes side by side and, and then strap it across the top with two by sixes and that'll give me more freedom as far as how to move move it on the tongue. It's in this position right now because that's that's just the only way it could sit. Right. Um, right. Get, so now it has to fall forward and your vehicle can't be on it. Right. I, I wouldn't be able to set it up if the vehicle was on it. I, I have to and, and I want to be able to bring it straight out to the side. So that's going to take a bigger base. Right, just the bigger base because it must be, the two bolts at their widest must be close to 10 inches. I think it's like <laughs> roughly 10 inches, so we're, you're going to need a 10 inch base. Right. To, um, so two of these side by side strapped across the top is, is going to provide a nice base. I just didn't have all the nuts and bolts out here. Right. Okay, so um, again, all the details, I know we, w we went through that too fast and some of you are going back, I didn't understand anything they just said. On Jim's channel, he'll step through it step by step and so that you see it and understand. Uh, we're doing a broad overview. I guess we're ready to lift it? Let's, let's pick this thing up. Okay, we're going to show you the actual lifting. Um, All righty. Now, I'm going to warn you, this is not light. I individually, the parts aren't, aren't bad, but lifting this into place is not light. So you would think this is a two-man job? Well, hopefully it's going to have to be a one-man job because generally I'm not out here with anybody. So now this is in place. It's just meant to keep this here until we get the straps put in and they'll hold it in place permanently. So let's do that. Now 
And these are just standard ratchet straps you buy anywhere. Yep. Ah, uh, Jim, I can't reach that. <laughs> Takes a real man. Well, just a tall one. On the screw of the stabilizer. Yeah. I'm not sure what you mean. The the triangle back there, or the the diamond. The the you know the the bolt that goes through the middle of the. There we go. Oh, stabilizer. Okay. I'm thinking of the uh, tongue jack or tongue stabilizer. Try putting the third one just straight down to the tongue. If that doesn't work, I'll pull the truck out. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'll pull the truck out here and, and use it as the third point. Again, this is all something we're learning about. We don't really, you know, we'll have to try this and see. Yeah, you never know with stuff like this. Um, It doesn't always come with perfect instructions. Well, this came with none, so <laughs> they are far from perfect when it comes with none. I think the front one has to go at a more of a forward angle. So now we have the, the what do they call these, guy lines? Guy lines. Put in to, it, it's not going to move up here. And um, that's the basic setup. Hopefully it, uh, it, it starts being windy enough to actually turn it. Um, on, on my channel, I'll show you how it gets wired up installing the controller. Uh, I'll be installing an amp counter into the, the wiring so I actually get a sense of what it's producing and at what, what wind speeds, which I keep track of with, with the uh, weather station here. And uh, we'll be able to report back if this is actually worth going through all the trouble for. Right. I think we're going to find that it's marginally worthwhile, but that's why we're doing it. So that you'll know if it's a waste of money or a really good idea. But so far, we're, you're getting nothing today. I, I'm not going to get anything today. And um, if it was windy enough to turn this thing, it'd be too windy to shoot video. Right. That's a good point. Um, in fact, if it's windy enough to turn this thing, it'll rock my trailer. Right. And that takes a lot of wind. So this is, this is my weather station. It's, it's called AccuRite. I picked it up about Amazon right before I left home. I, I'm pretty sure it's right around $100. It comes with the, the outdoor weather station that's wireless. It lets me know how, how, uh, how fast the wind's blowing, indoor, outdoor temperature, humidity, all those wonderful things. It does Celsius, keeps a record or does Celsius and Fahrenheit keeps a record of various things for 24 hours. And right now, the wind's coming right into the uh, weather station, so it's not being blocked, it's two miles an hour. Right. And it, this needs at least 10 miles an hour to even turn. Um, not to produce power. Would it produce power at 10? It, it's going to start producing power, but then I think that's when you start seeing one watt. Right. Um, yep, we're up to five. Got a five mile an hour wind. And it hasn't even really turned the thing in. Well, no, I, I haven't yeah. seen it move. Well, well, it turns into the wind. You can see it moving into the wind. Yeah, the, the tail turns it into the wind like any weather vane. But it, it hasn't caused those blades to flinch yet. No, not yet. And, uh, 
Well, I'll leave it up here and, until I, I take off and I'll, I'll let you know if it starts turning it off. When your solar isn't producing enough, this might be a wonderful thing to have. There's a, a website you can go to that gives you a general idea of the windiness of an area. So there are places where it would work year round. Most of Texas would probably work great. Uh, West Texas, it would be phenomenal. Yep. And there are places, Pahrump, I'm from Pahrump, Nevada, and I would use it there in a heartbeat because it blows there all the time. Wyoming. Wyoming, yeah, all the plain states. If you're some reason in the plain state, man, the wind just howls there and it would work. So you just have to decide if you're going to be where it will work and be worth the money to you. The mountain ranges where most of us go, the, the Rockies, the Sierras, and the Cascades, it doesn't blow hardly at all in the, uh, in the summer, and you're just not going to get anything out of the summer. And, and it's, it, it is a considerable amount of hassle to set up. Um, and unless I knew I was going to be in a windy area, I'm probably not even going to send it, set it up. So yeah, come to my channel, Solar Boondocker. We'll discuss the details and, and how we, I got it up there and uh, cost and, and things like that. I'll show you the wiring, how I have it set up, and we'll see if this thing actually ever produces some power. So there you have it, folks. I hope you got something out of this. It's just the beginning, and I know it's just the beginning, but this will give you an idea of how you could mount it. And I think if you have a van, I would do the same thing, except I would get a large, like, 3 8 inch steel plate that you drove your wheels on, and then it went up. Uh, how you would do the, the, guy wires. the guy wires, I don't know how you would do those. But that would give it to you with the weight. you got to have weight to hold this thing. And if you drove one of the wheels up on a large, like, two-foot-by-two-foot two plate, put the uh, L brackets in the middle so that it stood up, um, how you're going to secure it then, I'm not exactly sure. Because you got to really secure it oh, in yeah. place. You're, you're going to have to sink some... Massive. Some massive stakes in some place. Yeah, yeah, and the guy wires are pretty essential or else it's just not, it's too much leverage up really high. Oh, yeah. So we're going to see if we can figure out a way for you to do it in a van, but uh, at that at this point we know it's pretty easy with a trailer because you have the tongue. Yep. Um, and so we'll we'll just figure it out. And so Jim Bob, be sure and tell us your uh, your social media. Okay, well you, you can find me on JimInDenver.com where I do solar design and consulting. Um, you can add now wind and 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 wind. Well, once I learn it. Once you learn it. Uh, and I will restart my blog, the Solar Boondocker blog, to go along with the Solar Boondocker channel. And um, come visit me. I enjoy talking to y'all. Well, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, like us on YouTube, uh, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later.